survived the hurricane. Welcome some of our Florida friends. You made it up here. Glad you can make it. Uh, so what we talk about today is mental health. We're talk about how the brain works, uh, what happens to the brain, why it short circuits. That's a big issue. And many times when it comes to mental health, people think about treating the symptoms. I want to talk about treating the cause. Now sometimes we have to treat the symptom. I'm okay with that. Sometimes that has to be done, and I get that. But as we're treating the symptom, whether it's neck pain, back pain, mental health issues, digestive issues, it's okay to treat the symptoms as long as your ultimate goal is to get to the cause. And I believe this is the disconnect in healthcare. Because so often everyone's worried about treating the symptom and nobody gets to the real cause. And then we try one drug and that drug might have side effects, we try another drug. I'm not against drugs, I'm not against surgery. But if there's a way to fix it, that's going to be the goal. And I believe, and I've been right 35 years of predictions, I believe in the next 10 to 15 years, this is what's going to happen. This is going to be healthcare. Healthcare is going to be why you have this problem. All right, so let's get you calmed down and manageable, and then let's start treating the cause as well. And that's kind of cool. So the way the body works, the brain sits up here, right? Most cases. <laughs> and the brain is sending messages down the spine, out the nerves, and back up to the body constantly. We don't even know how many times a second your brain is talking to your body. We can't even calculate it. Two things can make a nerve malfunction, chemical or physical. Now, chemical would be food, drugs, alcohol, environmental toxins. These are the things that you have a lot of control over. And that's why, if you listen to my radio show, if you read my books, you watch my videos, I push this because this is something you can do. Physically, you may not have so much control. So if a bone moves out of place and pinches a nerve, it can hurt. But 90% of your nerves don't feel pain. So many times, I know there's a leak out there, it's said the leak, sorry about that, you didn't hear some back leak noises, so that's the back noise you hear. So physically, you might not have uh, the ability to deal with this. So if a bone pinches a nerve, it hurts. Now as a chiropractor, people come to us all day, every day with neck pain and back pain and shoulder pain, numbness and tingling, and we fix it, we do a great job. However, many times you can pinch a nerve and not know it. So for example, you don't feel your blood pressure. It's controlled by nerves, you don't feel your spleen, your kidneys, your earwax, your toenails all controlled by nerves. So my concern when I evaluate a patient is not only the nerves that feel pain, it's the nerves that don't feel pain. So we always think about the brain telling your arm to move, your leg to move, but there's a feedback system. Your brain is talking to your body, but your body is also talking to your brain. So we can block messages in either direction, and the body doesn't work. A neat little thing I, I do a lot with patients when they come in is they, many times they say they're dizzy, they feel like they're falling over. <coughs> So I'll have them stand up, close their eyes, and I'll see if they fall to one side. And if you fall to one side, it's usually something called the cerebellum, the back of the brain, not getting the proper neurological input. So what do we have to do is we have to stimulate the cerebellum. So it's not so much the brain sending messages to the body in a case like that, it's the body sending messages to the brain. And so what I have to do is stimulate that part of the cerebellum. What we do is we'll adjust, adjust one side of the body. Or we'll have them swing their arm on one side of the body, squeeze a ball, jump up and down on one foot, send neurological impulses up to that side of the cerebellum so that the body balances. And then I have to close their eyes again and they don't fall anymore and they think it's the coolest thing in the world. Okay? Pretty neat. If I scratch my nose, by the way, I got exposed to perfume today and I got a big inhale of perfume and then I touch my nose to it. And so, can't do perfume. Years ago, I remember I went on a date with this girl, and she was just stunning. And I was just so excited to go out with her, and she got in my car, and she stunk. <laughs> and about 20 minutes in, I said, I can't do it. I said, I can't even breathe. I said, I'm really sorry. And she got all offended. And I thought, well, I, I can't breathe. I can't fake the fact I can't breathe, you know? So, but one of my patients had perfume on today, and I did this like an idiot. So I was like, <laughs> got me. So, anyway, so we got to look at the neurological input going into the brain and coming out of the brain. So now we got to feed your head. Remember Alice in Wonderland, feed your head? And most of us don't feed our head. We don't give our body the nutrients that the brain needs to work. And so now the brain is working on cheap gas instead of high, high test. And so now the brain isn't working. So, so many people come to us and they're tired and they're grumpy and they have mood swings. And they can't understand why and it's a lot of it to do with the brain. You see things uh, like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. These are neurological, this is neurological damage to the brain. And now we're calling Alzheimer's type 3 diabetes. Because what happens is in type 1 diabetes, your pancreas doesn't produce insulin. You need to have insulin. Type 2 diabetes is your body's producing plenty of insulin, but your cells 
are not utilizing it. You put out so much insulin that the cells become insulin resistant. What that means is the cells can't utilize any more insulin, so the insulin opens up the cells and allows the sugar in. So if the cells become insulin resistant, you can't utilize the sugar that's there, and the sugar in your blood goes up. <coughs> Excuse me. So one of the things we do is we give you more insulin to force the sugar into the cells. That usually causes the cells to become more insulin resistant. So now you have more problems. And what we do with that is we just get you off all the sugar and make the cells want more sugar. We cut off the sugar supply to the cells. The cells go, wait a minute, I need sugar for fuel. You're not giving me any. All right, I'm going to let insulin open me up and let sugar back in. If that happens in the brain, type 3 diabetes. The brain is not utilizing fuel properly, and so now the brain can't work. It short circuits, and now we have something like Alzheimer's. Pretty wild, huh? So the brain uses sugar as a fuel. The brain can also use other fuels, which is kind of neat. It can use fat as a fuel. Ketones. You might have heard of the ketone diet or ketosis. That's when the brain is now using ketones as a fuel. And that doesn't go through the insulin pathway. The ketones go directly into the cells, and now the brain is able to reboot itself. So if somebody has a neurological issue, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, what I always do is I get them off all the sugar. That's breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, pastas, regular sugar. Get them off all the sugar. And what happens now is the brain has to use fuel. It switches to ketones. And many times the brain heals. Pretty neat stuff. So when it comes to mental health, you have to realize that you've got to give the body the nutrients that it needs. And most of us don't. Now, there's four things that your body does real well with. The best four foods we can eat are going to be fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. Anything that isn't a fruit, vegetable, nut, or seed is not going to give us the best bang for our buck. So most people are eating everything but fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. When they should be eating exclusively fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. And that's where the problems come in. You look around and you watch what most people eat, and it's alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, artificial sweetener, breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, pastas. That's what the average person is eating all day, every day. The brain cannot function very well on that fuel. And so what we need to do is get the body eating, get the person eating right so the brain can work. Those foods that I just listed are inflammatory foods. They cause inflammation. And when inflammation gets into the body, it can get into the brain, the brain actually swells, and that can cause the brain to malfunction. So a lot of the brain issues or the mental health issues we're looking, about, looking at are inflammation. And a lot of that inflammation starts in the gut. And so you eat foods, the, the gut becomes inflamed, that inflammation becomes systemic, it goes into the brain, and now you have brain inflammation causing mental issues. And it drives me insane when I watch people with mental issues, if, even if they're hospitalized. There's some very good mental hospitals right, right around the corner here, as a matter of fact. And if you ever go in there and watch what they feed these people, it's not the money. They're feeding these people breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, pasta, sugars, puddings, actually making the problem worse. That's why I predict in the future that we're going to have to start addressing the cause of the problem, not just treating the symptoms. So we can take somebody and put them on medication, and it might help, but if we're feeding them pudding, it's making it worse. Make sense? So that's what we have to start working on, getting people eating the right foods along with the other therapies. This has been the disconnect between the holistic world and the allopathic world. When those two come together, we will truly have a healthcare system. And I believe we're not far off, and the reason is this. Whenever there's turmoil, and boy, is there turmoil right now, right? Whenever there's turmoil, something rises up. A hero rises up. And this is the perfect time for a hero to rise up. Now, the hero may not be a person, it may be a, a thought. And that thought could be combining alternative and allopathic medicine. And that's when you're going to start seeing some dramatic changes. And I'm seeing it already. I get about a call every two months from a medical doctor wanting to come practice in my office. 20 years ago, we were quacks. We were crazy, cracking bones, eating tofu. What the heck is that wrong with you people? Now, I want to. I, 
About every two months, I want to close my practice and come work with you. I want to learn what you do in your office. I want to be able to treat my patients and get them well. Because a lot of doctors have kind of come to the realization they're not going to make a lot of money in medicine anymore. Those days are gone. And so a lot of doctors are not becoming doctors anymore. They're realizing I can make a lot more money as a computer programmer than I can as a medical doctor or a chiropractor or whatever it is without all the hassle. I'm going to say something else. Without all the hassle. Because trust me, I've been in practice 32 years. I have five other doctors, six of us all together. And the biggest problem we have is not seeing patients. It's trying to fill out the insurance forms. Because no one knows how to do it, including the insurance company. We had one patient come in, she called the insurance company, said, yes, you're in network, came in to see us, we looked it up, yes, we're in network, we sent out the bills, they sent it back saying, you're not in network. We said, but we are in network, here's our certification that we're in your network, well, you're, not, you're not in network. But you just told us we were in network. Well, it does say you're in network here. Literally, four or five hours on the phone with the insurance company, they don't even know what's going on. So if they can't figure it out, you certainly can't be expected to figure it out. We can't figure it out. Doctors are going, I'm done. I don't want to do this anymore. So I promise you in the next 10 years, we will have, or we do have, a doctor shortage. And it's going to get a lot worse. It's kind of like they were predicting the hurricane, right? And a sunny day, you're thinking, that's not so bad today. And then got a little rainier, a little rainier, got worse and worse and worse. That's what's going to happen in healthcare. In 10 years, there's not going to be doctors around. I promise you, I know this, because the, the enrollment in medical school is dropping, chiropractic school is dropping, all my doctor friends want out. Doesn't matter what kind of doctor, they want out. I want to quit. So nobody's talking about this, but it's going to happen. This is why you need to learn how to take care of yourself. And you're going to be forced to do it. If you don't do it now, you'll be forced to do it, which is fine with me. I don't care how you get here, just get here. And you're going to be forced to take care of yourself. So. We have to avoid putting the bad foods in the body. We have to put the good foods into the body. And we have, <clears throat> excuse me, <coughs> don't wear perfume around. <laughs> My rule, okay? So what's gonna happen is we have to start looking at the physical component of healthcare as well. Now what do I mean by that? You have nerves that come out of your neck that go up into your brain. You have blood vessels that come in the front of your neck called the carotid artery, the back of the neck called the basal vestibular artery that go up into your brain. And physically, if the bones in the neck move out of place, you can kink a blood vessel or a nerve. And if you kink a blood vessel, you're cutting off the blood supply up into the brain. And now the brain can't function. So chemically, you have control of it most of the time. But physically, as if a bone moves out of place, you can physically block a, a, blood, a nerve or a blood vessel. And that's why when you see people go to chiropractic, um, sometimes acupuncture helps relax the muscles along with chiropractic, and we open up the nerve and blood supply to the brain, the brain heals. Because it's just not getting its blood supply, it's just not getting its nerve supply. We've all done this, you fall asleep on your leg, right? Go to stand up, does it work? Well, your brain, this is the interesting part of the body, your brain doesn't have pain receptors. Your brain can't feel pain. It can perceive pain from somewhere else, but the brain itself, if I can get through your skull and through the outer coating, if I was in your brain, I could stick knives into your brain, you wouldn't feel anything. So your brain itself can't feel pain. So the brain can malfunction and it doesn't hurt. And that's where the problem comes in. You don't feel anything, so you think it's okay. And now the brain becomes very warped and you have this, this distorted perception of reality because the brain isn't working. And it could be because of pinched nerves or blood vessels going up into the brain. Pretty nifty, huh? So I believe, I don't believe, I know, that when we're dealing with mental health issues, we have to look at the physical as well as the chemical. And that's one of the missing links. Now, your brain runs on chemicals called neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters have to be made. And we make them from raw materials. And we have to get the raw materials in our body to make the, make the body assemble these neurotransmitters. Just like if I were to take a piece of flesh out of my arm, there's a certain amount of amino acids and vitamins and minerals and nutrients making up that bicep or tricep. There's a certain amount of nutrients that make up the neurotransmitters in our brain. And we have to get those nutrients starting with our digestive system. Every case I've ever seen in 32 years, and I've seen a lot, 
thousands, probably tens of thousands, of people with mental health issues, there's always an undiagnosed or misdiagnosed digestive problem, 100% of the time. Because when you're born, when the sperm and the egg came together, way back when, when you were born, the same cells that produce the brain produce the digestive system. And it's connected by something called the vagus nerve, V-A-G-U-S. Now the vagus nerve controls these two, it's the communication system. And now we're finding some new, new cool stuff. We used to think we were hardwired. That if I touch you here, it sends a message along a nerve up to the brain. Well, that's true. However, now we're finding that the bacteria in your colon can talk to the brain wirelessly. How cool is that? We're seeing the, the effect of the brain and the, and the bacteria working, but we don't see any nerves connecting them. And now your brain is now wireless. Cancer cells are wireless. What the body does, it takes cancer cells and sends it out looking for a weak spot in the body. So it finds a weak spot in the body and sends a message back to the original tumor. It says, come on over here. We got a cool spot to set up shop. It doesn't go back to that area. It sends it out wirelessly. Now, we're not sure how this all works yet, but we're seeing that it works. Pretty cool. So we have to have the right chemicals in order for the body to work. We are not plugged into the wall. We don't generate electricity by getting it from the wall. We have to generate it internally. We do that by the food and the digestion that we have. So there's a neurotransmitter in your brain called serotonin. Everybody hear that? Yeah. Anybody know what it does? Makes you feel good. Exactly. Makes you focus, makes you feel good. 95% of the serotonin is not used in your brain. 95% of the serotonin produced in your body is used in your gut. 5% is used in your brain. So let's assume I have a deficiency of serotonin. Who's going to win? The gut. They demand 95%, brain only demands 5%. So now my brain isn't working, I can't feel good. So I might have anxiety, depression, bipolar, ADD, ADHD, even suicidal. Because the brain is not getting its fair share of the serotonin because 95% goes here. Pretty wild. Dopamine. Dopamine gives you what? Pleasure. It's your pleasure neurotransmitter. And so if the dopamine isn't being produced in the gut, it's not going up to the brain, or the raw materials aren't getting up to the brain, the brain can't work. And so you don't experience pleasure. Everyone I've ever met who has anxiety, depression, bipolar, the things we just listed, they don't experience pleasure. The things that used to give them pleasure, going for a walk, being with their children, going to church, whatever it is, they don't experience that pleasure anymore because they can't because they don't produce the neurotransmitters. Make sense? So we have to have this working in order for this to work. And all day, every day, we're beating up our digestive system. How do we do it? Any ideas? How do you abuse your digestive system? Eating wrong. <coughs> Eating wrong. What could kill bacteria in your, in your digestive system? Antibiotics. Antibiotics. Where do we get antibiotics from? Everything. Everything. There you go. <laughs> Problem solved. So we can get it from taking antibiotics, which certainly is sometimes necessary, not always, but sometimes. But what if we're eating things like meat, dairy products? What do you think we give those commercial animals all day, every day? Hormones. Hormones and antibiotics. So what happens when you eat it, gets into your body, messes with your bacteria, starts killing it off. Big problem we have in our society is yeast infections. And you think, well, I'd know if I had a yeast infection, wouldn't I? Maybe not. Now the obvious thing is, like if you have a vaginal yeast infection, you know about that, okay? You might have a yeast under your armpit, crotch itch, uh, athlete's foot, you know about those. But you can have a subclinical yeast infection. Because what you did is you took low doses of antibiotics for many years, killed off the bacteria, started to kill off the bacteria, but there's something in your colon called yeast. And yeast aren't affected by antibiotics. So the yeast start to multiply because there's not as much antibiotics in the body as a, as a, a comp competition. The yeast start to die off. The, the, the bacteria start to die off. The yeast start to multiply. The yeast burrow holes into your colon and want to go set up shop somewhere. They like warm, moist areas. Where do we get yeast infections? Warm, moist areas. The armpits, the crotch, the back, the vagina, the feet, warm, moist areas. So now we start getting these systemic yeast infections 
that can get into the brain. And many times when I find people with mental health issues, I do a simple yeast test on them. They have yeast problems. We clear up their yeast, and the brain gets better. The brain fog, the mood swings, a lot of times that's a yeast problem. And it's not something that happened one day, it's something that happened over time. Now once you get the yeast into your system, it's really hard to get out. I'm not going to lie to you. Because it sets up shop in these cells and it gets into the cells and doesn't want to come out. And the tricky thing about yeast is this. If I have a bacteria, virus in my body, the immune system recognizes it and attacks it. The yeast put a coating on themselves. They create this protective barrier so that the immune system looks at it and goes, eh, that looks okay, and keeps going. They hide. So you have to break down the external coating on this yeast in order for the body to get at it and kill it. And we do that with something called enzymes. Enzymes we get from raw food. So that's why I recommend you do about 60% of your diet raw. Broccoli, cucumbers, tomatoes, avocados. Because raw food has enzymes in it. Enzymes can eat away at that coating on the yeast, exposing it now to the immune system. Make sense? Okay, so most people eat 100% cooked food, yes? Yes. Most, very few people eat raw food. Right. So I do, yes? What? We do. Well, we do, well, we're, we're special. <laughs> <laughs> but the average person, not us, people you know, they eat cooked food. As soon as you cook something above 110 degrees, the enzymes are destroyed. Once the enzymes are destroyed, they're... What's the bug? Did you wake She's the one we're talking about today. Right now. <laughs> so the enzymes are going to break down the coating on the yeast, exposing it to the immune system. So here's a simple test. It's in my, uh, I think I wrote about it in this book, actually. If you don't have this book, you should get it. Why? Because I have a lot of them. <laughs> Christmas is coming, yeah. The, actually, it's make great gifts. Uh, I'll sign it for you if you want. Don't sell it on eBay. Yeah. They sell for $85 signed on eBay. I'm watching you. I'd like a case, please. <laughs> but I have it here about uh, how to spot for yeast infection. What you do real simple is take a glass of water, clear glass of water, put it next to your bed tonight when you go to bed. When you wake up tomorrow morning, you got a big mouthful of spit, spit in the glass. Wait at least an hour. May happen right away, may ha take up to an hour. You'll see little strings coming off the, off the, off the spit. Looks like, a, like jellyfish. That's a sign of a systemic yeast infection. Now we can do little samples and get a little more creative, but that's a real simple, quick, free test. If you have a yeast infection, we need to sit and talk. But you have to start dealing with it now. It's not gonna go away quickly. It's not like I have uh, the flu and it's gonna go away in 10 days or five days or whatever it is. Yeast infections take months to get rid of. You have to build up the immune system, you got to get raw food in the body, you got to break down this biofilm it's called, the coating on the yeast. You have to get the immune system attacking it, and then I'll put you on some supplements to actually help kill off the yeast. The problem is this, when you get on supplements to kill off the yeast, the yeast die. When the yeast die, the immune system has to carry these dead bodies out. And when they do, sometimes you get sick. I've had a lot of people get them on a yeast detox and they feel awful. They'll get rashes because the yeast is dying off. So in a good way, in a weird way, it's a good thing. The yeast is dying off, but we've got to deal with that issue. And I tell people, listen, you may do this and feel worse. Don't stop. That means it's working. And they do it like, but I feel awful. I said, I know you feel awful. <clears throat> so once we get them cleaned up, then the body's healthy again. But that yeast can lead to all sorts of serious long-term health problems. So if you have a yeast infection, we need to deal with it because many times that's the cause of mental health issues. And I challenge any mental health hospital or facility to test every one of their patients for yeast, treat them for yeast, and see what kind of results they get. And I know in my practice get amazing results, but I need to get it mainstream, which we will. It's happening. In my radio show every week, we get new stations picking us up all around the world. And so because of that, the, the demand is there. People love the show. They love the show because it's new stuff. It's things they've never heard before. Whoever heard about yeast infections causing mental health issues, right? Bacteria talking to the brain. No one talks about that. I mean, 20 minutes, you've learned more than a lot of doctors know in their, their whole career about alternative healthcare. Shouldn't be alternative. This should be mainstream. That should be alternative. 
getting it. So we got to get the digestive system working. So what are some symptoms of the digestive system not working? Acid reflux, heartburn, burping, gas, bloating, diarrhea, constipation. Sounds like a lot of you, doesn't it? Read your diary, didn't I? So what happens is if the digestive system, you should eat food, it should break down, you should pass it out. Bowels should move two to three times a day. How many times? Two to three times a day. Not a week, not a year. Two to three times a day, because food in should mean food out. Anybody ever have a baby? Never. Ever was a baby? Okay? They eat, they poop, they eat, they poop. Where does this all come from? How did this little thing make, you know? You're always amazed at that. And what's happening is the body has, the body, food in should mean food out. As we get older, we do stupid things. We don't have time, we're busy, we don't like to use public toilets, and so the body backs up, and these toxic waste products build up in the body. Years ago, I had a girl come to me, 16 years old, she's going to the bathroom two to three times a month. Parents had spent hundreds of thousands of dollars all around the country. Finally came to me one day, it's a different radio station I was with. I said, Dr. Joe, we don't know what else to do. There's one test, we can send her to Cincinnati, I gotta go with them, it's $10,000 just for the test not counting transportation and them going there and everything. And they're going to make her swallow something. If, if the bowels don't work, they're going to put her on this medicine. I said, why don't you put her on a medicine? See if it works. Save 10 grand. That's a good idea. <laughs> so I said, let me make something for her. So I formulated something called Dr. Joe's Intestinal Cleanser. And I put this together for her. And I said, why don't you take this every day? So she started taking it, and of course, this alone with chiropractic care, because we, we checked the nerves in the low back. She had a chronic pinched nerve in her low back. That's the nerve that goes into the bowels, the colon, and the sex organs. Her stomach was pushed up against her diaphragm, so her, spa her colon was all spasmed, and she didn't have a good diet. Never did any of the hospitals or doctors ever mention fixing the nerve supply to the bowels or fixing pulling the stomach down away from the diaphragm, getting the stomach to relax. No one ever mentioned that. So. I worked on it, we got to go in the bathroom two to three times a week. Then I created Dr. Joe's intestinal cleanser. She still takes it to this day. It was probably five, ten years ago. Now she takes these, she goes two or three times a day. Okay? So this stuff is great. She's an exception. Okay? She didn't respond as well as most people do. Most people, once we adjust their spine and fix their stomach, everything's fine. But this stuff is great to kind of jump start the bowels. You should be going two to three times a day. And that's normal. And if not, there's a problem. And so that can affect the bacteria because the food sits in the colon and it rots and the bacteria become, they're not getting the proper food, they're, rot, they're, they're becoming toxic, sends messages to the brain and that can cause real bad problems. Along with the bloating. Okay, she get that big bloating thing if the bowels aren't working. So we gotta get the bowels working properly. We gotta check the nerve supply to it. We gotta get the bowel, we gotta get, get you on the right food. We gotta get you on fruits, vegetables, nuts and seeds. We wanna get you off the things that don't have fiber. Because what happens is you eat food, you eat fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds, and the bowels expand. There's nerves in your bowels called stretch receptors. And eventually they're stretched to the point where they send a message to the brain saying it's time to contract. And that's what makes you go to the bathroom. The stretch receptors are stretched until they contract and then you move, move your bowels. And if you're eating things like alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener, zero fiber. And so what happens is you don't have enough action on the stretch receptors and the bowels don't contract. So you got to check the nerve supply to the bowels, you got to check the bowels themselves, you got to eat the fiber to stimulate the stretch receptors, and when you're eating foods like fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds, you're getting lots of nutrients. And that's what the body needs in order to work. Now the stomach, back to the stomach, the stomach's job is to take proteins and break them into amino acids. The amino acid tryptophan becomes serotonin. Remember serotonin? Tyrosine becomes dopamine. Remember dopamine? Glutamine becomes GABA. What does GABA do, you know? GABA is a neurotransmitter that suppresses other neurotransmitters. Isn't that silly? I never understood this in the body. 90% of your brain function is suppressing the other 10%. So why do we even have that other 90%? Why don't we just naturally suppress it? I don't understand that. I didn't make it. I just know how to fix it. Okay? So the GABA suppresses other neurotransmitters, including pain. So I think I'm the only chiropractor in the state who's board certified in pain management. So a lot of patients come to our offices for pain. Headaches, neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, car accidents, sports injuries. So they come to us as a pain patient, and I look at their diet, and I look at their digestive system, and they're not eating the foods that's giving them glutamine to produce the GABA to suppress the pain. So if we give them the best chiropractic care in the world, and it's like a miracle the work we do, 
But if we're not giving her the proper nutrients to suppress the pain, where this shouldn't bother you, suddenly it does, because you're not naturally suppressing it. Make sense? And then GABA also becomes, uh, glutamine becomes norepinephrine. Norepinephrine gives you energy. How many people are tired all the time? How many people are too tired to raise their hands? <laughs> so, you? <laughs> so it goes back to the digestive system. It goes back to the digestive system, proteins being broken into amino acids to be absorbed and create the neurotransmitters. So 85% of you, according to my statistics, have acid reflux, heartburn, burping, gas, or bloating. Because 85% of my patients have it. And I always say 85% of my patients have digestive problems and 15% lie. <laughs> so everybody's got some type of digestive problem, but nobody seems to talk about it. And so many times it's a physical problem. Remember physical? You have a sheet of muscle called a diaphragm, a hole in a diaphragm called the lower esophageal sphincter that drops into your stomach. If your stomach pushes up into the diaphragm, now the stomach isn't digesting proteins into amino acids to produce the neurotransmitters. So we need to physically pull or massage the stomach down away from the diaphragm, relax the stomach and the bowels, everything starts to release, and the proteins are broken into amino acids. Cool the proteins that? are what then? They what? What was that last sentence? The proteins are then what? Proteins are broken into amino acids. And amino acids then become the neurotransmitters. Okay? Follow that? Yes. And so it's interesting because many times I'll have a psychiatrist, psychologist, patients in the mental health industry call me and say, I listen to one of your shows, I watch one of your videos, and I never, ever thought about what you just said in three minutes. It never made sense to me. We have patients with mental issues. We can counsel them, we can put them on medication, like things like specific serotonin reuptake inhibitors, SSRIs. Those are designed to essentially, real simply, utilize the little bit of serotonin that you have. What if we just made more serotonin? And that's what I'm talking about, is fixing the cause. And sometimes you gotta treat the symptom, but in the process, you wanna get the cause. And they say, finally, in all the years I've been in practice, now it makes sense to me. And I'll ask, ask every one of your patients, it's a weird question to ask if you're going to a therapist, do you have a lot of gas, bloating, acid reflux, heartburn, are you ticklish? Because if you're having digestive problems, you're usually ticklish right here, you're protecting your digestive system. Pretty wild, isn't it? And I know this because when I fix somebody's stomach, I pull the stomach down, I can then touch them on the sides and they don't lose their minds. <laughs> but before I touch them and they're screaming. Pretty neat stuff. So ticklishness and pain travel along the same nerve. It's called the lateral spinal thalamic tract. And as the ticklish and pain travel along the lateral spinal thalamic tract, we don't know why the brain perceives it as pain sometimes and ticklishness also. But it's the same neurological impulse. Why the brain differentiates it, we don't know that yet. We will. We don't know that yet, but we know it's traveling along the same nerve, so it's the same reaction. And if anybody's ticklish, you know that it's very painful to be tickled, isn't it? It's not fun. And so we have, when we start looking at how the body works and the neurology and the chemistry, just like a car, I don't know how a car works. It's been explained to me. You shoot gas in, the gas explodes, and the pistons go up and down, and I get it. But I've never put together an engine. I've never fixed a car. But in order to fix a car, you have to know how it works. In order to fix the body, you have to know how it works. And that's what I'm trying to teach you is how the body works. And it's not hard to figure out. It's actually pretty easy. Well, it's easy for me. I studied it for 32 years. So. And it's fun. Major universities all the time contact me. Will you please come and teach for us? I don't have time. I'd love to, but I just don't have time. I'll guest lecture. I'll go into universities and guest lecture periodically, but I just don't have the time to actually sit down and teach a class. But a lot of teachers will take my videos and my radio shows and play them in their, in their classrooms. I get it all the time. Teachers call me up and say, can I play your lectures in my classroom? Yeah, sure. I don't care. And then it's really cool, because years later I'll run into somebody and they'll, they'll look at me and I'll say, we watched your video 20 years ago and I didn't realize that artificial sweetener caused headaches. It just happened the other day. And some kid came up, a kid, a guy came up to me and says, wait a minute, I, I know you. Where do I know you from? We're trying to figure it out. And he says, I remember I used to drink diet soda constantly. I had blazing headaches. Went to every doctor known to man. They gave me all these medications. Didn't work. I watched one of your videos in my high school class. They, you told me about how artificial sweetener aspartame, number one side effect is headaches. I cut out the artificial sweetener, my headaches went away. And I didn't have to take any more drugs. He says, thank you. How cool is that? So it's fun when you understand that. So let's talk about aspartame for a second. 
Aspartic acid is an excitotoxin. What that means is it excites the brain. It causes the brain to fire faster than it's supposed to and can literally burn out your brain cells. There's another amino acid that does that too called glutamine. Remember I just said you need glutamine to produce GABA and norepinephrine? You need glutamine. Excessive amounts of glutamine, especially when it's an isolated, when it's by itself, is an excitotoxin. It causes the brain to fire faster than it's supposed to. Where do you find excessive amounts of isolated glutamine in your diet every day? Mono, sodium. Number one side effect, monosodium glutamate is what? So aspartic acid and glutamic acid with other amino acids, they play nice together. When you put them in a concentrated form all by themselves, that's when they start doing damage. And aspart excuse me, aspartame is aspartic acid. Aspartic acid, phenylalanine, and methyl esters. So aspartic acid causes the brain to fire faster than it's supposed to and burns out your brain cells. Number one side effect of a headache of artificial sweetener is headaches. Number one side effect of monosodium glutamate? Headaches. Oh. See, it all starts to tie together now? Your pills. Up. Time's up. Time's up. <laughs> so if you eat these foods like monosodium glutamate, the concentrated form is actually causing nerve damage. So if you go to a Chinese restaurant, always order it no MSG. <clears throat> And they will say, we don't use MSG. Right. And then you'll eat it, and then you'll get a headache. But if you ever read the sign at a lot of Asian restaurants, it'll say, no added MSG. Keyword? Added. They don't add extra. But soy sauce, when you create the fermentation process, produce glutamic <coughs> acid. <coughs> Following? Okay. So if you're using the cheap soy sauce, a lot of glutamic acid and monosodium glutamate is already in the sauces. So what I want you to do is notice how you feel, not just physically, but mentally, after a meal. Every time I go out for Chinese food, I get a headache. Guess why? Don't go out for Chinese food, okay? Every time I drink a diet soda, I get real angry. Aspartic acid, phenylalanine, methyl esters, aspartame, right? Every time I drink sucralose, the little yellow packet, I feel sad. These are things that I've learned over the years. I never put it all together. What I do is I tell my patients, write down everything you eat, and if, you have, if it's emotional, if it's a, a, health, a mental health patient, I want you to write down how you feel at the end of each meal, an hour or so afterwards. Every time I use the little yellow packet, I get sad. How could a yellow packet, you know what I'm talking about, right? The sweetener, sucralose. Sucralose is a chlorinated hydrocarbon, it stimulates your estrogen receptor sites. Excess estrogen can make you sad, right? So a lot of times what you're doing is affecting your mental health and you've never correlated the two. I get sad, I don't even know what triggers it. Start writing down what you're eating. Every time I microwave my food at work, I feel sad. What do you microwave it in? Plastic. Plastic contains bisphenol A and phthalates, and these chemicals are released into the food, which stimulate your estrogen receptor sites, causing mood swings. I never thought about that. Yes? So, the soy sauce? Mm -hmm. um, so, what kinds of soy sauce do not have that? This is natural. It naturally occurs, um, but if you're using like a miso type thing, yeah. that would be a better choice. It's not as concentrated. Okay? So, that would be a better choice. So I want you to do this. Do it anyway. It doesn't matter if you have mental health issues or not. I want you to take, write down what you eat. If you go to my website, drjoesposito.com, we have a form. And it's called a diet diary. Print it up, it's free. You use your own if you want, I don't care, but it's, it's a simple little diet. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner, snacks. And it says how many times you go to the bathroom. And just start writing it down. And as you write it down in the column, in the, in the margin, I want you to write how you feel. And you will be amazed. Every time I have pepperoni pizza, I get tired. Saturated fat clumps your red blood cells together. Red, red blood cells carry oxygen. Your brain isn't getting enough oxygen, I become tired. Every time I do artificial sweetener, I get anxious. Don't do artificial sweetener. And you'll be fascinated when you become your own doctor and start doing research. <coughs> so for the mental health to be at, at optimum levels, you have to have a normally functioning nervous system, pinched nerves and pinched blood vessels. 
a normally functioning digestive system, so the brain is talking to the body, and you have the good bacteria in your colon. If you have a yeast infection, we've got to wipe that out. And you have to have a good diet. And the cool part about having a good diet is it's really cheap, it's really easy, and you do it for just two or three days, and you'll be amazed at the results. And guess what? If it doesn't work, so what? It didn't work. But if it works, which it will, you'll say, wow, you mean this is all it takes to be healthy? Yes, it really is that easy. Okay. Years ago, somebody came to me and said, Dr. Joe, what would you consider the world's best supplement? And I said, well, I take supplements every day, but if I would consider the world's best supplement, I would take fruits and vegetables and put them in a pill. Because fruits and vegetables are the source of your vitamins, minerals, and nutrients. So I did something, I sat down with some chemists out of California, and I created something called Dr. Joe's Essential Source. Get your essential nutrients from the source. Is that creative? That was the most creative thing I ever did right there. <laughs> so I took fruits and vegetables, juiced them, took the water out at a very low temperature, what was left is a powder. Why a very low temperature? I don't want to destroy the enzymes. Then we had prebiotics, probiotics, more enzymes, and a complete multivitamin, nothing synthetic. So I started taking this every day and I was amazed how much more energy I had. Even my bosses at the radio station say it's amazing the way, because we get callers. You heard my shows? Have you heard my shows? When people call in, I don't know what the question's going to be. It says, you know, Bob from Marietta wants to know about public <laughs> you know, And I'll say, Bob, how can I make your day better? And he'll say whatever Bob wants to say. I have eight seconds to dump him if he wises off. Yeah, we have a dump button, it's called, okay? And I've only had one person, two people wise off in all the years I've been on radio. So people say, how does your brain process the question and an answer that fast? The reason is I give my brain the fuel that it needs. My body, I shouldn't even say my brain, my body. And then I realized that most people are too acidic. Now we talked about alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, stone, artificial sweetener, very acidic. So we need to neutralize that acid. So the acid, it, acid is like Pac-Man, it eats through things, and it dissolves things. So I created something called Dr. Joe's Super Greens which are very alkalizing to the system. I take a scoop of each every day, at least once a day. Now, if I have a big day, if I'm going on a hike, if I'm going to do a couple of radio shows back to back, I got a TV presentation, I got to see patients and do a lecture, I'll take a double dose, just that simple. So I would suggest if your bowels aren't moving two to three times a day, Dr. Joe's intestinal cleanser, everybody should be taking Super Greens, an essential source every day, absolutely positively, no excuse to getting people out of pain. Because when you're in pain, nothing else matters, does it? I want out of this pain. In fact, after this, I have to go to my office. Because a friend of mine called me just before I left, and he says, man, I was mountain biking this weekend. He says, my back locked up. I can't move. I said, i got to give a lecture. As soon as I'm done with the lecture, I'll meet you at the office. He said, great. Because he says, I can't move. I can't do anything. I said, I understand. So he's going to be, and he, again, he took some medication, took some aspirin. It'll calm down his pain, get him to the office, and I'll fix it. So, your turn. Questions? Yes? I'm having an issue currently that I've had intermittently before. Um, just out of the blue, I'll start smelling smoke, like cigarette smoke or campfire smoke. Yes. So I could be laying in bed, I could be driving in the car. Sure. Okay, that could be uh, uh, several issues, actually. Okay? One of the tests you can do is the peanut butter test. And I'm going to divert for a second and then come back to you. Uh, with peanut butter, uh, you look it up online how to do it for Alzheimer's patients. Some pe if you can't smell peanut butter at a certain distance from your brain, it could be a sign of early, early dementia. It's kind of interesting. Just look it up online, peanut butter test. It's kind of cool. Okay? But if you're smelling smoke, it could be that there's a sinus infection. The sinuses could be backed up and have an infection in there. I would say stay away from all dairy products and all wheat. Absolutely. Everyone should do that anyway. But do that and see if that helps. If not, I would check the nerve supply because the olfactory nerve is what we call a cranial nerve. It goes directly from the brain to the sinuses. That's why when you smell things, it brings back memories more than anything. Right? You can look at things and say, that looks familiar, but if you smell something, you know exactly who, you, who it reminds you of. Your first boyfriend, your grandmother's house, your moldy basement when you grew up at home. So this olfactory nerve is very, very, uh, is a direct uh, link to the brain. It goes right from here up into the brain. So I would check the nerve supply up into the brain, and I would, I would cut out to see if there's a sinus infection, cut out the wheat and the dairy products. Okay? Got a note. Would you comment on the topic of brain scans and mapping? Okay. I can do that. Yes. Brain scans and mapping is great, because when we do brain scans and mapping, we can actually see patterns. 
we diagnose somebody with a condition, we do a brain scan and we say, okay, this brain scan is what somebody with ADD has. Then we can say, okay, we did a brain scan on somebody, it looks like an ADD patient or it looks like an Alzheimer's patient. So the brain scan and mapping is great because different parts of the brain control, uh, are control, control different parts of the body. And a good example is if we gave you cocaine, part of your brain lights up, okay, it's usually the nucleus acumen, it's the part of the brain that causes pleasure, releases dopamine. So the nucleus acumen lights up if I give you an illegal drug. If I give you sugar, that same part of the brain lights up only about six times as much. So to extrapolate that, it's not exactly one-to-one -one correlation, sugar is six times more addictive than cocaine because it's stimulating the pleasure centers in the brain. So when we start looking at mapping the brain, it's very good stuff, absolutely. However, the question comes up, what do you do about it? When I was working on my diplomate in orthopedics, it was a five-year postgraduate uh, study. I studied with Dr. Rick Ackerman, brilliant man. And he said, if you don't know, if, if, if you can't diagnose it, diagnose it if you don't know it exists. So now we can diagnose things. We can say, okay, this part of the brain lights up, it's ADD. This part lights up your precursor to Alzheimer's or Parkinson's. This person is prone to depression. The question now is what do we do about it? What we do about it is what we just talked about today. Okay? More questions? Did you ever um, suggest someone take an antibiotic for yeast infection? Uh, what they usually do is they give them a drug called Flagel, which will wipe out the yeast infection. The problem is it's very, very damaging to the liver. So there's a trade-off on that. And the antibiotics don't usually affect the yeast. You have to take an anti-yeast anti drug. Um, so you've got to be real careful with that. If you do take the medication, it can kill it off too fast, and you get sick from it, and it can cause liver damage. Okay. That's what. Rather than do it slowly. The answer is no, then? The answer is not for antibiotics. I wouldn't give, uh, I wouldn't give for yeast infection. Okay. Garlic works great. Yeah. You mentioned on here uh, proper breathing techniques. Yes. Most of us don't breathe right. So a couple of things. Number one, if the stomach is pushed up against the diaphragm, the diaphragm can't drop down, and we don't breathe properly. That's why every snoring patient I've ever treated Stomach is up against the diaphragm, and when you're standing, di the gravity's pulling it down. And so you're able to drop the diaphragm and go up and down and breathe. When you lay down, you take gravity out of the picture, stomach pushes up against the diaphragm, diaphragm can't drop. You try to inhale, there's the snoring, and then you wake up, sleep apnea. So, breathing techniques. First of all, when you inhale, you, your stomach should expand first, okay? And then the chest. The best breathing technique I can teach you is the 415 technique. I want you to inhale slowly for the count of four. Let's do it. Hold it for one count, and then exhale for the count of five. This is a great technique to kick in what's called your parasympathetic nervous system. Two types of nerves in your body. Sympathetic speeds you up, parasympathetic slow you down. The parasympathetic nervous system is usually the one that we need when we go to sleep, we go to the bathroom, when we're uh, in a happy surrounding with our friends, and what happens is we get stuck in the sympathetic mode and we're not downshifting to the parasympathetic mode. By doing the 415 breathing technique, it kicks in the parasympathetic nervous system, which allows the brain to reboot and relax itself. So 415, yes? Do you, do you take in and breathe out your nose? Yes, try to do your nose if you can. That's more of a yoga breathing, yes. <clears throat> exactly. Okay? Uh, I'd just like to do one testimonial and one kind of a cautionary thing of one is, uh, I've always been, or licensed childhood, somewhat of a depressed, anxious person. Mm -hmm. Both parents uh, were or are on medication for it. Uh, I had a traumatic accident and really had some PTSD issues after that. Um, I went on a 100% raw diet, and my fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds, 100% raw. So, and when I did that, uh, my anxiety and depression virtually disappeared. Excellent. Um, cooked food integrated back in. Anxiety I see goes up a little bit. The more raw I do, the better I am. The one thing I just wanted to just throw out a, a, a caution for is that sometimes you say to do the, the diary, what you eat and how you feel, what you eat and how you feel. Sure. I think sometimes it's more of a, a, a long period of time and not necessarily you're going to recognize the feelings after an immediate meal. Uh, Yes, sometimes you will, and if you're real in tune with your body, you will, but I think the majority of people might not see changes unless they did it for a little bit more of an extended period of time. So I'd like to suggest people look at things over time. Sure, doing I agree with you. Well. Absolutely, yeah. What she was saying was if she eats raw food, she, was, uh, she had a depression, 
and on a raw food diet, essentially went away, started putting cooked foods back in, and started to escalate back up again. And with the diet, you can see instant, but again, you could do long term as well. And that's why you kind of look at it as a guide. And that's why if I eat Chinese food and get a headache every time, well, this is a direct correlation. But over time, most people eat such a bad diet that even if they looked at it over time, they're not going to see the correlation because they're always eating bad food. <laughs> That's why I say take something like Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. Notice how you feel after that. You'll see a pretty quick response. And if you're not seeing any changes in your diet as you're making, keeping your diet diary, then start making some changes in your diet and see what happens. Okay? More questions? Yes, uh, I've been... Uh taking the supplements now for almost four years um, very regularly mm -hmm. and uh, where my diet has not been as healthy as my first shake in the morning right um, something I've, I'm curious about though I think I'm eating too much fruit because mm -hmm. uh, I've become just a, a sugar a holic with yes. fruit um, I've cut banana out of my shake because I, I get that brush, you sure. know, and uh, I've been using grapes. Do you have any suggestions? Yeah, you got to cut the sugar out of the diet and only two or three pieces of fruit a day max. Okay. Okay, good example is I went home, to, uh, well, I went to visit my mom, she lives in New York, and that's really great Italian bread for this Italian bakery, and she said, oh, you got to have a piece. I said, okay, I don't want to, you know, don't argue with mom. And it was a vegan, I'm a vegan, and it was a piece about the size of my hand. And I ate a piece of it, put some vegan butter and some olive oil on it. It was great. Spectacular. Next day, you know what I wanted? More. <laughs> More. That was it. More. It's up there for about four days, came back, was in a grocery store, shopping around, started looking at the bread, going, man, maybe I'll buy a loaf of bread. I don't eat bread. It has wheat, it's sugar. I never eat bread. I had this one piece instantly. The dopamine receptor sites in my brain started firing off. The nucleus acupins were getting stimulated. I wanted more bread. So you don't, don't use fruit as a crutch. Well I'm, eating, well, I'm eating 15 pieces of fruit a day. It's still sugar. Okay, so yes, you got to cut it out. Uh, something I am, I did start putting in my shake because a lot of times I can't get my uh, apple cider vinegar, my uh, olive oil, and my coconut oil. So right. I started dumping all that in there sure. too. And uh, now when I don't have it, I miss it. Yes, that's perfect. And then at first it was like, oh, it kind of tastes you know, weird. Yeah, but now I'm like, no, I miss it. Oh, yeah, absolutely, and that's great. Now, you can take the super greasy essential source, and like you said, use it as a base. Add some extra virgin organic coconut oil to it, two or three tablespoons of it. You can add beet powder. Beet powder, they juice the beets just like we do the, the essential source and the super greens, take the water out along with the sugar. So the beet powder is high in nitrates that, when you swish it around your mouth, combines with the saliva to create nitric oxide, which opens up your blood vessels. So you can add some beet powder to it if you wanted to. You can add turmeric to it, wonderful anti-inflammatory. Come right by itself, it's a little strong. You could add it to the shake. So you can add things to it that doesn't have to be the only thing you do. And I just use coconut milk, unsweetened coconut milk, almond milk. Yeah. Okay. What? I use cinnamon in there. Cinnamon is great too to stabilize the blood sugar. I use that on a regular basis too. Okay. More questions? Yes. You talked about the microwave and the plastic. Yes. What did it cause? It releases chemicals that are hormone disrupting chemicals. Okay. Question is, how do you start to detoxify? The best thing you can do is start to detoxify. That's the easiest thing. The neat part is, as soon as you stop putting the junk in, the body starts getting the junk out. The body is amazing its abilities to, re to, to clean itself out especially the liver. The liver is the fastest healing organ in the body. I can remove 70% of your liver and it would grow back and you would survive. So the liver is amazing re recuperative powers. You just have to give it the chance. So right away, raw fruits and vegetables, 60 to 80% of your diet raw, super greens and essential source, absolutely at least once a day. And then what I do with my patients, I do a nutritional workup on every patient and give them other specific supplements just for them. But the easiest thing to do right away is 60 to 80% of your diet raw. And that's why the second, uh, this book, Eating Right for the Health of It, is such a great guide for that. So, should you wean yourself off? Nope. Like, Just do it. Just do it. Okay. Nope. Got to start today. So, you're saying the liver can cure itself? Oh, the liver's amazing. As soon as you stop putting junk in, the liver starts to heal. Yeah. Seeing people come in all day, every day with liver problems, start cleaning them up. Six months later, go back, get their blood work done, and the doctor says this, I don't know what you did, whatever it was, keep doing it. 
and then they'll try to tell them what they did. And a lot of doctors, of course, in, uh, that are in my uh, radio areas know who I am. And I say, listen, if Dr. Joe do, says it, just do it. <laughs> they don't even argue. It's like, just do it. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, so uh, I was on statins for a while, and I stopped and changed my diet, and my cholesterol came down, which is great. Keep cholesterol down. The best thing to do is everything we just talked about. What we're finding now is it's not that one in a hundred people produce too much cholesterol. Ninety-nine out of a hundred, the cholesterol is being produced; it's just not being recycled, and so that's why it builds up. So once you start to clean out the liver, you open up the recycling bins, so to speak. You recycle the cholesterol, and it works very well. So what you want to do is stay away from alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, artificial sweetener, and the liver will heal. In most cases. Well, if you have a genetic issue, then, like I said, one in a hundred people absolutely should be taking statin drugs. If you're producing too much cholesterol, if you have a genetic predisposition, there are, that's when drugs play a very good role. But you need to be more careful than everybody else. So if you do have a genetic predisposition or a genetic flaw, you got to be more careful, and sometimes drugs are necessary. I mean, there may be a case where someone has a, an autoimmune condition that's attacking the thyroid, and you try everything you can to fix the thyroid. Well, if the immune system keeps attacking it, you may have to remove the thyroid to stay alive. And so in cases like that, that if there's a genetic predisposition, then we have to be careful with it. But you've got to be more careful than everybody else. You can't just say, well, I'm going to remove my thyroid and just eat whatever I want. You can't do that. Yeah? Do you have any great advice for helping a 17 or 18-year-old person who uh, has anxiety and depression? Obviously, it'd be great if I could have a meat, you know, 60% of his diet raw, but that's probably not I know. Somebody said once, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Yeah. Teenagers are tough. Uh -huh. So if you look at that person, chances are they're going to have burping and gas, they're going to really stinky stools, they're very ticklish, the head is nodding, because you can't see it on the camera, her head is nodding. Mm -hmm. So we need to get the stomach and pull it down away from the diaphragm, mm -hmm. and then work on the spine as well, chiropractically. Mm -hmm. That's going to help them, and they're going to be amazed at the results, and then they're going to say, okay, I'm willing to do other things. Once you see a little bit of a success, people usually jump on a bandwagon. Or if you're buying food, don't buy bad food. Don't have the bad food in the house. On the subject of depression, 5-HTP supplement that? Serotonin combines with, uh, yeah. uh, tryptophan combines with B6 to create 5-HTP. 5-HTP becomes serotonin. Serotonin becomes melatonin. Okay. That's why most depressed people can't sleep. Right. They're not producing melatonin. you got to go upstream, downstream, wherever it is, and get the body to break down the proteins into the amino acids and then make sure you have a healthy small intestine to have a lot of B6 available. The B6 creates the 5-HTP. Okay. Follow that? B complex. Well, the super greens, the, the essential source has B vitamins in it. Um, if you're going to take a B vitamin, though, you can use things like nutritional yeast, which is a great source of B vitamins. Uh, if you're going to do any supplement, just make sure it's not synthetic. Okay. Uh, hepatitis C. Yes. Um, how does that play into this with the liver, or what, what additional or other things need to be involved? In? I've had a couple of hep C patients. When we get them on a really good diet with a lot of enzymes, they test negative. Okay. That being said, I've had other people where they don't test negative. So either way, you've got to really take care of the liver and get those enzymes in there, and then hopefully the body will stabilize itself. And a lot of what you were talking about with brain scan and mapping mm -hmm. and stuff, would you say that if you just went ahead and cut to the chase and did all that, that it, would, it wouldn't be necessary? That's most cases, that's what happens, yeah. Okay. Yes? Oh, absolutely. You have brain trauma, yeah. That's a biggie. Would food help that, or you food would help, then you got to check chiropractically, make sure the nerve supply is working properly, <clears throat> and then sometimes we have to work on rebooting the brain itself. Many times you have to adjust the skull. People think the skull is a solid rock of bone, it's not. Physically or just everything? Physically. No, physically. Yeah. You yeah. physically, just like you manipulate the spine, you manipulate the skull. Yeah. I studied with Bertrand Desjardins, who studied with Dr. Still, who was the founder of osteopathy, who came up with this. So I've been in practice a long time. So a lot of the guys who created these techniques, I studied with them. And they it were, works. And it works the amazing. The cran cranial work is like unbelievable. And I have very few doctors know how to do it. I'm, I'm, my doctors, I train them. So they know how to do it. But very few doctors know how to do cranial work anymore. Do you like colonics? Uh, colonics are OK. Just don't do them too often. You can flush out the good stuff, too. So, but if you get if you get the body healthy, if you get the, the nerves going to the organs working, and you're eating a good diet, chances are you won't need a clock. Again, you may be treating a symptom, not the cause. Yes. Testing for telomeres. 
Test for what? Testing for telomeres. Testing for telomeres. I don't do it. You can go online, look up a company that'll do it. I know there's a, I can't remember the one company, I forget. But, uh, yeah, well, they, 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 they test your telomeres, and depend, the telomeres are part of your gene. It's like a tail that's on your gene, and depending how long it is and how active it is, it can tell your biological age, not your chronological age. That's what the calendar says, your biological age. But I, you'd have to get that done by a testing company. Just look online and say telomere testing. There's a lot of companies that do it. So. All right, so here's your homework. Oh, where is it? Everybody got a survey? Yes. Yes, okay, I want you to fill out a survey. Let me know what you thought of today's workshop. Did you like it? Did you not like it? Did you learn a few things? And then on the bottom, I want to give you a present. If you'd like to come see us, our office is about three minutes from here. I'd like to have you make an appointment to come see us. We'll check your nervous system, we'll check your digestive system, and we'll see if you have something that I think we can help. If you do this, check the boxes. Yes, I want to make an appointment. You can see Lori in the back and she'll set you up an appointment. Now, there's two rules on making an appointment. Number one, if you make an appointment, you better show up. I joke a lot, but we're going to reserve time for you. And it's extremely unprofessional and inconsiderate if you make an appointment and don't show up because you took time away from somebody else, and that's not fair. We're planning on you being there. Number two, if you're not ready to make some changes, don't make an appointment. I'd rather talk you out of making an appointment than talk you into making an appointment. So if you're not willing to do something, not everything, but something, don't make an appointment. If you just want to sit and chat, don't come see me. Send me an email, I'll answer it for you. If you're serious about wanting to get well, now this goes for you, your friends, and your family, you can mark that box and Lori will set you up an appointment. We accept patients with all insurances, we accept people without insurance, car accidents, sports injuries. I have never seen a car accident where the car was damaged where the occupants weren't. Ever. I don't care what the insurance company says. Every patient that comes in, I mouth it with them. They said, I got a call from the other person's insurance company, and I say with them, and they offered me $500. I've seen cars totaled, I've seen cars scratched. $500 is the only damage you ever had. According to insurance companies, doesn't matter what it is. So, don't believe that. If the car was damaged, you were damaged, you gotta get yourself fixed, okay? And when you hand in your survey, Lori or Julia is gonna give you a coupon for 10% off everything you buy today. Is that nice? Okay, class dismissed.